I'm not dead. That sounds like something interesting. Welcome to Cattle Country. Tucked away in the southeasternmost corner of Oregon are the Forgotten People. They're Oregonians geographically, but their state of mind lies somewhere else. Hi, I'm Rick Dancer. So let's get started in a little place just up the road called Rome. <laughs> One hundred and some odd miles from just about any good-sized city is a place called Rome. I have uh, cabins, an RV park, uh, a little store and a restaurant, and then gas, and then I have the tow trucks. A roadside stop in an otherwise boring stretch of highway in one of Oregon's most forgotten places. An oasis in the desert. Malheur County, a French word meaning misfortune. Do you feel like you're the forgotten part of Oregon sometimes? Well, we hope we are. <laughs> remote. The supplies, I kind of don't have a problem with the isolation, but uh, when we need something, we have to go so far to get it. Remarkable. We don't punch a time clock. A place where neighborhoods are spread out in acres, where 95% of the county is rangeland. When you want to shop, where do you go? The Boise Valley. And it's, Boise's 117 miles from here. Ten thousand square miles of county, an area roughly the size of New Jersey. Oregonians know nothing about it. Uh, Pam White, who uh, I think you you met her. Okay, she took me out in her dad's um, pickup. There's no doctor. And I come walking out of my house, and she says, uh, "You got you okay?" And I said, "No, I'm having a heart attack." <laughs> He said, you get in this truck and I'll take you to the hospital. Joel McLehannon bought the town of Rome about 15 years ago. Well, this is kind of a stop off where if they need something, milk, uh, bread, stuff that you, you know, you use all the time and there, there are no real grocery stores in the area. Most folks who live out here are cattle ranchers. Not much else to do in this part of Oregon. Population of Rome is about 25 people. And, uh, and we like it that way. There are no housing developments. In fact, don't even talk about development in these parts. It's not as if Romans don't like people. It's all the stuff they bring with them. People have talked about, uh, you know, why don't we want to put in uh, sewer, uh, sewer systems and public water systems and, and start to incorporate maybe uh, getting some more police support or fire department and stuff. And all that leads to taxes and uh, bureaucracy and we like it like it is. Is that a dirty word here? Bureaucracy, <laughs> pretty much. Rome does have an ambulance and life flight out of Boise if necessary. There's even an airstrip. The Rome Motel is no Ritz-Carlton, but out here, hunters and travelers don't seem to care. Just don't clean your birds in the room. That's not a rule, it's just a request. You gotta be straightforward, because if you BS us, we do it. You know, and, and it just won't, won't fly. The pillars of Rome are breathtaking, limestone carved by the elements and time into a natural wonder. This one, called the Colosseum, is round in the middle. It looks just like the Colosseum in Rome. But not one human hand had anything to do with this artwork. Life is so different in this corner of Oregon, so different. There's no nightlife here. You just, you know, if you want to watch the TV, that's about it. Cell phones don't work. Well, if you go up to the top of the ridge, just above the White's Ranch, there's a small area where certain customers can get service. Just relax and enjoy yourself and don't get too carried away with uh, the bureaucracy. It's just, you know, one of those things called the trail and you don't know where it ends until you get there. Misfortune to some, something much different to those who come, stay, and settle this place. I've lived here my whole life, so I don't know it better.
We're here with Scott Morris, the director of the ReStore in Eugene, but also representing Springfield, because we, we're in both towns here. Correct. So tell me, what is the ReStore? For people who've never been here, what is this? The Habitat for Humanity ReStore is an affordable home improvement outlet. What it provides for Habitat for Humanity is a funding stream. We take new and gently used building materials and sell them to the public at typically 50 cents on the dollar compared to one of your big box stores. And you get your materials from whom? Private donations and business donations. We have a really nice mix. About 60% of the material in the store comes from private donors, like yourself if you were remodeling your kitchen, and about 40% comes from businesses that have overstocked or discontinued items that they need to get rid of. And in terms of Habitat for Humanity, how much of this the money comes from here that goes into funding Habitat for Humanity? In the overall scheme of things, our net proceeds margin is about 33%. So we gave in excess of $150,000 to wow. the affiliate to help cover expenses for the affiliate. Wow. So when you're buying something here or bringing something in here, you're not only providing products for other people and recycling and reusing something. You're making a huge difference in the community. Habitat's mission is to help eliminate poverty housing, and this is our single biggest funding stream now is proceeds from the ReStore. And the nice thing about it is what it gives us is it gives us unrestricted funds. If you're looking for sinks, toilets, bathtubs, cabinets, doors, windows, hardware, plumbing fixtures, this is the first place you should stop. I feel good because we're helping customers achieve their dreams. Whether we're helping a customer with a home remodel, doing something that they didn't know they could do on their own. Homeowners, for instance, if they're remodeling a bathroom, can find everything they need in this store, but it's probably going to take them about a month to do it. They may come in one week and find the perfect low flow toilet. They may come in the next week and find the perfect pedestal sink. They come in a couple weeks later and find the tile they want to use on the floor and the trim they want to use around the vanity. If people plan ahead for a month and start coming in on a regular basis, they can find everything they need that's more affordable than just going to a big box store. I'm Leona Houston with Country Financial. I've spent years in our community helping families protect their homes, their cars, and their lives. Complete financial security doesn't end with insurance. I'm also here to help you plan for your retirement. I'm backed by a team of professionals that can help you achieve your goals. Together, we'll set up a step-by-step -step plan to help you reach your financial security. Let's talk soon. Hi, I'm Patrick Olson. I'm Patrick Olson Auto Repair here in Eugene. If you need a place where you can get your car serviced at a reasonable rate, fixed right the first time, every time, come see me at Patrick Olson Auto Repair. And, uh, I'm on this video right now because uh, uh, I'm good friends with Rick. If Rick trusts me, you can trust me too. Well, in an era where newspapers are struggling and, and a lot of larger papers are dying, uh, we uh, are doing well because we tend to cover things local and we offer news that people can't get anywhere else. Well, that we actually do some research and talk to the sources and get the, get the story and all the details behind the story. Hey everybody, it's Rick Dancer. So when, when my wife and I were younger, when Kathy and I were younger with dating, we used to go to the roller skating rink and we haven't been in so long. And so this networking group that I'm involved with is having a little party and they're um, going to the skating rink in Springfield. So I called my wife and I said, let's just go, what the heck? Let's go skating. So I had coffee with this friend of mine named Kale. Rick, you've got to do a vlog, just like Casey Neistat. I said, a vlog? 
So I decided I would do my first vlog um, on the skating rink that we're going to tonight with my wife. However, I discovered that I wore these really tight pants and for skating, I'm pretty sure skinny jeans are not gonna work. So I gotta change. So I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way where you just change in the car and uh, hope that nobody else comes to the parking lot to get their um, clothes while I'm sitting here in my skivvies. So anyway, it's just how it works. Every guy has had to do this before. Get in your car. Oh gosh. And skinny jeans are not easy to get on. Gosh, I hope nobody comes to their car. Oh, oh. Why do they make skinny jeans so skinny? So hopefully we're keeping everything undercover, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and Otherwise, I'm gonna have to get the blur out feature. Those are the old jeans. This is the part that gets kind of scary. <laughs> I guess I can edit it out. You know how you have to push yourself up a little bit to get your pants on? I'm dying in here. Ugh. Okay. Pants are on. And we're ready to go roller skating. Whenever I drive with my camera on in my car, people write me and say, that's dangerous, what are you doing? So I'm not gonna do it a lot. Oh, come on, let us out. Worst place to try to get on the highway in Eugene ever. People, people don't let you out on this road. It's always like this at five o'clock at night. Drives me insane. Horrible. So I'm sitting outside Skate World waiting. My wife just called to tell me that she's late. That happens a bit. It's a girl thing. So this is what Kathy and I used to do when we dated. She can skate backwards. She's really good at it. Okay, Noelia, there you are. <laughs> Threw you off. Yeah, I missed that. I'm, uh, I got my legs back, but my ankles are gonna kill me tomorrow. Guys, you know, if it wasn't so dorky, I would skate. But I'm not coming in here with a bunch of kids to that music that they do. Okay, it's getting sweaty. We've done this for an hour, and I think we're about done. I am sweating like a pig. All right, well, there you go. That's what it's all about. You know, sometimes you gotta take a risk. Don't let people tell you you can't do something, and don't feel stupid about it. You know, I mean, yeah, it was roller skating, you know what? But it was fun. I got to do something I haven't done in a long time. It was kind of fun to be with my wife that way and have some fun with her uh, like we used to do. And it takes you a little trip down memory lane. So I'm 57, gonna be 58 soon. And uh, I am not gonna stop being active and doing my thing. So that's just the way it goes. Another friend we're bringing on board as a sponsor for our Rick Dancer programming is Brinker's Restoration Contractors. Carlos is a friend of mine and he just signed up to do this because he really believes in the power of you. 
And what he does is he comes into your home. If you had water damage from the recent storms or your toilet overflowed and ruined your floor or, or just damaged some things, um, honestly, just about anything, your shower's leaking, um, you just need somebody who can come in and has a top-notch crew, can take care of the issues that are bothering your home and make you feel at ease. And he's super fair. I know this guy, I trust this guy, and he will not overcharge you. In fact, if anything, Carlos does stuff that he shouldn't probably do for free. <laughs> he's super helpful and he's a good guy. So that's Brinker's Restoration Contractors. I'll put their logo up here. Um, pay attention to the, our sponsors because these are the people that make all of this programming possible. And when you go in there, tell them you saw it on Rick Dancer TV. So you're fine, right? This is Katie Hallard. Hi, everyone. Equinox Real Estate. That's right, with the Hallard Real Estate team. So, uh, you know, right now our inventory is super low still. We're at 1.7 months worth of inventory. So what that means is if no new homes come on the market, it would take us 1.7 months to sell everything. Seriously? Yeah. That's not very much. That's so if you're somebody who's retiring or the kids just moved out? You have a big house, you want to downsize? This is the market to do it in, or maybe you're in a small house, it's too tiny, you want to move up. There's buyers for every price range, and we need homes listed. Looking for something fun for the whole family to beat boredom, be active, and have a splashing good time? For less than the cost of going to the movies, you can bring the whole family to Splash, where the weather is always perfect, the surf's always up, and no sunscreen is required. Pack a towel and head to Splash at Lively Park in Springfield. For more information, go to willamalane.org. Splash at Lively Park. It's waves of fun. And this is Amanda Adams, and she works with Habitat for Humanity, which is the organization that the ReStore helps finance, right? Yes, the ReStore is one of our funding sources. They help us to support building and repairing homes in the community for low-income families and individuals. So how much does this help for you guys? Oh, the ReStore is a huge help because they're one of the most reliable funding sources we have. We get individual donors, we have corporate sponsors, but the ReStore is constantly selling constantly working within the community to help fund our home building, our home repair projects. So when you're buying something here, not only are you buying a building material and helping to re be you know, recycling, but you're also helping these families and, and the community find homes. Exactly. A friend of mine called me and said, Rick, I'm having a really bad day and uh, I just need something to make the world seem like it's a little bit brighter. A lot of bad news in his world, a lot of bad news in his life right now. Um, and uh, so he came up with this really cool idea. He posted on Facebook that uh, he wants his friends to meet him downtown and uh, he's going to hand out flowers to people. I love when people come up with ideas like this. You're never too old to care. Um, I've kind of had a rough go, a couple weeks. Um, found out some people close to me are really sick. Yes. That's so awesome. Just anyone Just at all? Just take one, you can oh, all take one. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, had one of my um, good friends die at uh, 32. I just need to get out of my head. Here you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. I feel sort of stereotypical handing him <laughs> to the girl, but yeah, um, there you go. You know, realize that there are things out there that are bigger than me. I'm not the center of the universe, so yeah. Uh, there are people you see every day that you work with, um, that you see on the street, that have a story that you'll never know. Um, and I think this is a good way to kind of get involved in that. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
You're the first person to ever give me flowers. <laughs> oh, well, high five for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a better day. Thank you. There you go. Bud. You're welcome. I love you. Mwah. Love you too. Have a safe ride. That was nice. Beautiful. You guys just beautifully made my day. Thank you. Rock Thank on. You. Yeah, this is the first time someone's ever given me flowers. Not even my girlfriend gives me flowers. That is like really cool. This just made my week. Seriously. You know? I saw that there are not enough instances of people just doing nice, nice things for no reason. What? <laughs> in eighth grade, the turnaround uh, event um, at the country club. Yeah. You, you were the host. That was a pretty good day. Okay. Um, many years ago, it was a turnaround Hi. award. Hi. Um, you were hosting, Hi. and I had my whole family out there, and uh, I really appreciate that. And you got the turnaround award because you turned your life around. So what did that mean for you? Well, I'm in college now, so. Are you seriously? Yeah. I earned a full ride scholarship to the University of Oregon, so. So don't ever tell me that you cannot turn your life around. Yep. What's your name? Cameron James Cassidy. Cameron James Cassidy. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you, Rick. Got it. Yeah, it's really nice to <laughs> you, you made my day. I love my life. Yeah. It's probably fine. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Thank awesome. you. And did it do what you needed it to do for it you? It totally did, it absolutely did, yeah. So what is truly awesome about that is Sean's having a bad day, and so he's able to go and just bless people like crazy, and it gets it out of his head, and it helps him to do something nice for somebody else. Um, you know, it makes you kind of wonder. Perhaps the best way to handle bad situations or bad days might be to do just what Sean taught us to do. Go get something, Get out of your head and go do something really nice for somebody else. Instead of sitting and dwelling on what's going on in your world, um, get into somebody else's. And you know what I like a lot about what Sean just showed me and you and all of us is pick strangers. You know, it's really easy to do nice things for people we know. It's really, really hard to do things on the spur like that. So maybe that's what we should try to do. And what's the moral of the story, the golden nugget out of this? You are never too old to care. Until next time, that's Rick Dancer. Bye-bye. I will tell you, you know, about our food is that we prepare everything from scratch. So we make sure we hire people that have the passion for making food. That's one of the ingredients. The other one, we make sure that our recipes, they use the ingredients that we tell them to use. And we, before we uh, put it into the market, we make sure we test, you know, try it. What I love about this business is the people. I'm a people person, so I love to interact with people and I love to make people feel good. So here's the best part at Ranchito Grill. Every month they give away two free dinners to some lucky winner and all you have to do is go in there, have dinner, fill out a little piece of paper with your name and your phone number on it, stick it in the Rick Dancer box and we draw a name out every month and have a winner.
All right, we're here with Annie C, and she's the Rebel Princess of Recycling. What right. that means, you'll discover, and just after <laughs> after about a minute of talking with you, you'll know. Annie, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. So you're kind of this creative woman that comes in and says, so I saw these file cabinets, and she says, Rick, you know what you could do with these? And I can think of a thousand things, but not what you said. So talk to me. So um, the, the fun part about this store is the whole creative process on seeing these old things and weird things and repurposing them into useful things. So this lovely Mickey Spillane era private eye file cabinet could be repurposed. If you added a piece of wood down here, you could turn this into a spice cabinet, um, a bulk pantry cabinet for flowers and rice and grains and what have you and have it in your kitchen. For you personally, the, mm -hmm. the, the ReStore is really about recycling, reusing, mm -hmm. Re repurposing. Absolutely, and it's also for a great cause. It helps build homes for affordable homes for low-income families. Credibility is huge, I mean it's, you put the facts together and you tell the story, the complete picture, then that builds your credibility. Trust is um, key, because if they don't trust what it is that you're doing every single week, then they're not going to subscribe the paper, they're not going to buy the paper, they're going to look for other sources to find the news that they want. It's about the community, that's what the paper is, it's the community paper for Cottage Grove. So the other day I was talking to a friend of mine and she asked me a really tough question. She says, Rick, I don't want to know what you do. I want to know why you do it. And that got me thinking. It was really hard. So the first time I said, I, I don't know. I mean, why do I produce videos? Why do I do Get Real with Rick Dancer? Why do I do video production? Um, and I said to her, you know, I think it's because I like to give a voice to the voiceless. And she goes, you like to? And I said, no, I love to. That's my whole passionate thing is to give a voice to the voiceless. And she says, why? I said, I don't know. And she goes, Be I said, because I guess people deserve to have a voice. And she said to me, why? And it really made me have to go inside deep and think about it. And finally, it kind of came to me and I understood why. When I was a kid, my dad was a good guy, but he didn't listen to me. And he was a negotiator and a speech teacher and he didn't, he and I just missed each other and so he didn't connect with me. So he would pretend to listen or think he was listening, but in the end, he would, wouldn't really be listening to me. And that has driven me my entire life and I didn't even know it. So why is that important to understand that? Because my business is not about making money. Yes, I have to have money to survive. I'm not retired like people think. This is a business, it pays my bills. I have a mortgage just like you do. I don't have a car payment because I'm smart. <laughs> but I do have to make a living. But the thing is, I don't want to be about the paycheck. I want to be about businesses that are like me, that not just like me, I want businesses who have the same ideas, the same drive that I do, and that's who I want to work with. I want to tell the why you do what you do, not necessarily what you do. The what will come out, but if you don't have the why, people aren't going to pay attention to you. So if that sounds like something we could team up with, I'd love to talk with you more about that. Because you know what? Why you do what you do is the only thing that's gonna get you up every, out of bed every day and get you to work. What you do is just gonna make you work for a check. I am not gonna spend my life doing that again.